guys, Thunder E here, and this is the OnePlus 10 Pro. Yes, there's a OnePlus device you can't buy because it's only available in China right now, but I do have the 10 Pro in my hands. Now, it comes in two different colors, and this video is all about gaming, but we'll touch on some of the other different points on this device. Uh, as I mentioned, two different colors. This is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. I keep making a mistake while I'm trying to mention that properly, but the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, uh, we also have eight gigs of RAM in here, can go up to 16. Uh, then we also have, of course, 120 gigabytes of storage, and we can also increase that as well. Now, there's a 5,000 milliamp battery built into this bad boy, which is great. And it does support an 80 watt charger, but this is a super Vogue charger as you can see it here. So this is taking a lot from what Oppo is doing because now this is part of Oppo as a company. Design wise, I do like this device and I like its look and feel. The display is 6.7 inches, 120 Hertz. It's now LPTO2 display, which means it can go from one Hertz to 120 Hertz, very adaptive, which is nice. We can actually see that here in the settings by Literally jumping in, go to display, and then boom, we have it right here. Screen refresh rate, high, maximum, and that's great. I love that aspect about it. So before we get into gaming, let's take a quick look at the camera itself. Now the camera app feels like the Oppo camera app. You can see a lot of those um, details feel the same. Check out my uh, Reno 7 Pro video. You can find a lot of those features out because this is running ColorOS 12 in here. And we've got a ton of features from tilt shift, dual view, all that fun stuff. Uh, and the recording is where we have a couple of recording modes. I wanna quickly show you this because we're gonna see it in this video. We've got 4K and we've got 8K. So we can record at 8K, 24 frames per second or we record at 4K at up to 120 frames per second. Now let's get to the meat of the matter and what we care about, which is gaming. So this of course has the brand new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, and we have a couple of games we want to play. First off, of course, is Call of Duty Mobile. Now playing Call of Duty Mobile, uh, before we actually even do anything in that, we do have a Hyperboost Center, which I do like. Now what I like about it is the fact that in the Hyperboost Center, you do have the ability to improve your performance, you can lock your orientation, you can block notifications, you can also see your FPS readings for your game that you're playing, as well as also your CPU and GPU usage there, which is actually pretty good. And that allows you to do a lot more while you're gaming. But I actually wanna go into the benchmarks of those games. So Call of Duty Mobile is one that we start off with quite well. And using our benchmark tool, uh, GameBench, and we actually have GameBench Pro here, we can go in and see what we actually got for benchmark. So we got 59 frames per second, which is pretty solid, normal, five minutes of gameplay. CPU percentage was 11%, GPU was at 47, and we use about 876 megabytes of RAM. Now our frame rates, we can see how the frame rates actually went through throughout our gameplay period. And it calculated battery drain, so in an Per hour, we will look at about 23% uh, battery drain per hour, which uh, is something I'm just checking recently, but I, that's kind of high for me, at least in my mindset on there. So that's what you get with a game like Call of Duty Mobile. So when we go into PUBG Mobile, we have two gameplays. Of course, we start off with our normal Ultra HD Ultra, played for about eight minutes, and we got 39 frames per second and CPU is 11%, GPU 23, RAM usage is actually pretty low at 334 megabits per second. Now, our frame rate chart is also here. Uh, medium frame rate is about, uh, medium frame rate, which is 39 frames per second. We had that for about 64% of the time. Now, battery drain is about 22% uh, per hour, so it's slightly less 
very slightly less than Call of Duty Mobile in there. Um, and then when we go ahead and change to Smooth Extreme, we play for about five minutes and 50 seconds. We go to 59 frames per second, which is something that's very typical, 59 or 60 frames per second. CPU usage was 15, GPU was 17, RAM usage was much less at 277 megabytes, so less RAM used with PUBG Mobile. Our median FPS at 59 frames was, we had that for about 86% of the time, so that's actually pretty good. In terms of our battery drain, that was much higher, 31% per hour. So you're playing at smooth extreme, you're gonna be draining more battery. Now I did get, do all this gameplay using QHD display at 120 Hertz, so that's what I actually got. Now, of course, to the main game, Genshin Impact. This is where things were interesting. Genshin Impact, we played for about 20 minutes and our benchmark tool gave us a performance of 42 frames per second at the highest settings for Genshin Impact, which is quite interesting. And we actually got a battery reading of 4.2 hours is what we would get playing Genshin Impact fully. CPU was 21%, GPU 55% usage, because it's a GPU intensive game, and RAM was 746 megabytes, so not too bad. Our average uh, or median FPS was 42 frames per second, we had that for 90% 90, 90 of the time, which again is interesting. And then when we go to battery drain, we're looking at 24% per hour. Again, this is a little higher, but not as high, of course, as PUBG Mobile Smooth Extreme. What is interesting here is that FPS, 42 frames per second. I got better FPS readings from Snapdragon 888 from last year. But then again, this device, hasn't fully hit the market yet, so there are no updates to the games, of course, at this point in time to take full advantage of the chipset, so which is why we're seeing such numbers. I'm gonna put that as the little caveat here, but that is something for you guys to take note. In terms of temperatures, we're getting about 110 degrees, so that actually wasn't too bad uh, on this device. And in terms of audio, you guys just take a listen. Yeah, so this device is quite interesting, and especially when you look at the frame rates we're getting in terms of uh, gameplay and some stuff that, of course, I think will change due to updates. But I can't wait to compare it against the S22 Ultra because I think that is a device that will at least push for updates for some of these games so we can see how well they perform. Now, when it comes to game streaming services, it works pretty well, as you would expect. Stadia, Xbox Game Pass work well. And that's something I think you would expect from devices now. Now, the controller you see here is the Narcon controller. Uh, it's Narcon MG-X Pro. Uh, it's $99 and it's a pretty great controller if you're using game streaming services, but not for your standard Android gameplay. I wanna know your thoughts, guys. What do you think about the camera? Uh, the photos that I took, as well as also what do you think about the gaming performance on here? Are you shocked? Are you surprised? Do you think it's okay? Or do you think we just have to wait and see? Leave your thoughts down below. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.